praise him. And we get out and set our feet out on the floor. We need to say, thank you, Lord, for being alive this morning. But, uh, I won't go on, you know. But, uh, Lord, uh, Lord is good. It's been so good to me. Like I said, I, I'm a cancer survivor. You know, uh, like I told the brother here this morning, uh, I went to, I was lost. I lost in sin back then, about 18 years ago or so. And, uh, uh, I, you know, had cancer of the bladder. I didn't know which way to go. You know, you, you ever get so confused, you don't know which way to turn. You know, when you got cancer, you're scared. You're really scared because when you're lost, you're scared. And I had a friend that was a pastor. I'm, I'm going to tell you, don't tell you who I had. Um, that was a pastor of the church, a little country church. It's a wonderful church. And uh, I, I said, I can't handle it anymore with this, Lord. So I went to him. And I says, Brother, I want to be saved. I want to be he healed. I know the Lord can do it. And I asked him to do that. I asked him to, I asked, I asked him to pray with me. And uh, the Lord to save me. He saved me that night. And uh, guess what? Uh, he uh, had to go to do three surgeries before that cancer. God really took that cancer away. So like I was telling the pastor, your pastor here, God wanted to put me in my place. He wanted to make sure that I was where He wanted me to be, not where I wanted to be. Because sometimes God will put you in a certain situation to get you to do what he wants you to do, to be obedient to him. But uh, I won't go on and on, but uh, praise God that he's so good. But he healed me after that third surgery. I, it's been uh, how many years now? Eight years now. And I'm cancer free, praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to do a song. Uh, this is the word that was written about a little boy that's uh, in a wheelchair. He's too young to understand. But he knows, he calls on the one that can give him all the answers. Will he be a crippled boy in heaven? Just listen to the words. I think you'll be blessed. Oh, yeah.
This one, uh, she missed it in her testimony. And by the way, I like to start out today, and uh, I knew I was going to get up here. That's why I didn't testify earlier. But, uh, you know, I was talking to them the other day about uh, a lot of churches. I saw two things when I first came to this church I really liked. Number one, you still had the altar. You know, you go to a lot of these big churches anymore, and they take out the altar. And that's what church is all about. You know, I've got Facebook, and I've got uh, one of them chain letters that normally I don't, I just normally delete them. But this one caught my eye when someone said on that chain letter, went 29 people, Lord, I don't want to see them die lost. And that caught my eye, Lord, I don't want to see them die lost. That's what it's all about tonight. It's all about seeing so safe, set free, set apart, and delivered. And uh, I liked your thing whenever you got up and everybody else got up. I grew up in a church where everybody was up praying every time somebody was up at this altar. No matter how late it was, they would pray until that last person was gone. And you missed that a lot of times anymore. And number two, people want to take out the testimony service. Testimony service is a big part of church. God's done something for each and every one of you here today, and you ought to be thankful for that opportunity. Because tomorrow, I wrote a song, it's called, One Day There's, there's Going to Become No Night. Right now, you can go any church doors. You can go to about every street and every aisle, and you can see a church. You can sit down in your pew, and you can listen to the preacher preach God's anointed word. You can hear him preach about heaven. You can hear him preach about hell. You can make your way down to the altar, and you begin to pray. But there's going to come a day when there'll be no night. When we won't have that opportunity to pray at night. God can meet you there at that altar tonight. Any given point in time while we're up here, and I guarantee these other two will say the same thing, any given point in time we're up here, if you need to pray, you need to pray. Amen. Because you need to obey God. You won't disrupt us whatsoever. You should obey God. That's right. When I'm up here preaching later on, if God lays up on your heart, you come up here. And just obey God tonight in all things. And this was an old song that she mentioned in her testimony. She says, I feel like traveling on. And you know that, today, that should be every one of our testimonies that we feel like traveling on. We've all had battles. We've all had things along the way. We've all had struggles. But we feel like traveling on. And we ought to be thankful for that. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Will be mine, I feel like traveling on. No pain, no death can interfere. I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly mansion. Today, we'll just do this one. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me while I was praying. Somebody touch me. Must have been the hand of me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me.
Because the day we stop praying, that may be when the day God's going to show us. Just listen to this. See, I'm going to give you the last of this song. Oh, man. 